engines of the last Seoul Uganda airline plane, last world in 2001, bring an end to 24 years of endurance by the dead ridden company. The sight of the new aircraft's touchdown at the expanding Entebbe International Airport for the first time in 17 years will surely reminiscent emotions of joy. Flying the crane again is the deliberate measure government is enthusiastically pushing to implement. In order to invigorate our services sector, the government will revive the Uganda Airlines. We have already, we have already booked slots for the manufacture of medium and long distance planes. The revival has excitedly been given a nod of approval to the undertaking a visa through direct flights to save on time as well as avoid the burden of interconnections. Uganda, being a landlocked and airlocked, is actually a, a logistical nightmare. And therefore, Ugandans must, must know that we cannot be landlocked, but also no, have, have no powers over the air. It's completely wrong. The country has made firm orders with Airbus and Bombardier Incorporated, certainly reflecting the commitment towards the implementation of the 1.4 trillion project. This is only the first step into its rather ambitious project that should have a hangar, catering and ground handling services. That's why we need a very good board and management. They will discuss this. Uh, some of them is uh, airport handling, that is uh, catering, ticketing. There are so many others where are funds coming from, which could be owned or co-owned PPP with other business partners. Although the Ukrainian skies have proved lucrative to some regional flyers, like the Ethiopian Airlines and Kenyan Airways, many have fallen prey to their dark side, including international giants British Airways that went parking in 2014. The battle for the Ugandan skies is not about to come to an end soon, seeing more entrants eyeing the route. Air Tanzania is the latest national airliner scheduled to stretch wings with direct flights to Entebbe starting August. People like me, I am trying to, um, to invest in Tanzania. And because I'm trying to invest in Tanzania, it's going to be easy for me to move up and down. You know, you can, two days you go, do your business, come back from Tanzania. The revival of Uganda Airlines comes at a time giant regional flyers are facing strong headwinds, with Kenya Airways having reported a record loss of $290 million in 2015, whereas Rwanda Air made a $2.8 million loss in 2016. These carriers mostly took advantage to overcharge and at times mishandle Ugandan travelers. The, the cost that you spend to buy an air, uh, a ticket between Entebbe and Nairobi is the same cost that you use or spend to buy a ticket between Entebbe and Dubai. If the Uganda airline is to stand out of the competition crowd, then habits which characterize the defunct national carrier must be avoided. In the past, there was uh, impunity. These things of saying the minister is, is delayed, surplus delayed a plane, nonsense that should not be entertained. And so what we should is make sure that our flights are scheduled, that we have great pilots, that we have great air hostesses, no tribalism, nothing. You just make sure that we do we get competent people for this national career to do that. But one of the strategies implemented by opting for a particular type of aircraft has generated concern from aviation experts. You need also to make sure that the airlines within the region you've got a relationship. When you have a problem with your airline, they can help. So having the same equipment is extremely important. Already I see Uganda Airlines is buying a different equipment, which will not augur very well with the other three. Since the announcement of Uganda's order for the Airbus aircrafts, there has been public backlash on grounds that Uganda is the first and only carrier going for the A330-800 new engine option aircraft. But government has since defended the choice. The A330-800 is therefore not a new aircraft, but it is an enhancement of the existing variant. But then, the order for Bombardier aircrafts must be a step in the right direction since the same equipment is operated by both Ethiopian Airlines and Kenya Airways. The future for the Uganda Airlines could as well lie into a merger 
the East African Airways shall by 2019 have four national carriers with Rwanda Air, Kenya Airways, and Air Tanzania already in operation. The region has an approximate potential population of 180 million people. For now, though, all players shall have to fiercely struggle for a lion's share of the same clientele. Same people, same language, same approaches, small economies, all weakening themselves and undercompeting themselves to a point where, in the long run, maybe we may not have airlines that will survive in the region. The African aviation giant with a total of 100 aircrafts surprisingly harbors the same dreams of partnership. The fact of the matter today is put, we, when we put all of us together in the continent, we only have 20% of the market share of uh, intercontinental traffic. So I think we have to cooperate and partner more to increase the market share from 20% to at least 50%. Operationalization of a common regional carrier isn't a new venture for the East African community. In 1946, the East African community had a regional airliner which collapsed in 1977 amid its deteriorated relations. At the time of its collapse, each of the three East African community member states, Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania, was running a separate national airline but soon tumbled to a fall, except for Kenya Airways. The airline revival hasn't come without trace of the skeptics, though. Theoretically, that is what I would call the utopian thinking. It would be good. We have tried it before. We had uh, an East African Airways. I worked for them. Unfortunately, our politics is not yet up to speed. Even now it can't survive. Because much as we're neighbors and we have East African community, we have different interests. Right now we have different political uh, dispensations. Uh, we look at politics differently. Number two, we are like siblings. We have a bit of rivalry siblings among us. Number three, every country is pursuing its own business opportunity. Unless Uganda, Uganda is not, we don't have a particular business interest that we are pushing as a country, and I, which is very bad as a nation. There is little debate that remains about the revival of a national airliner as government has shown determination by placing firm orders with Airbus and Bombardier. For now, all the energies will have to be placed on ensuring that the airliner turns into a worthwhile national asset. Onyango Jackson, reporting for UBC TV.